Hey guys, I come on and on and share some concerns that I have with AI and the technology. With AI, um, there are a lot of connections with AI and the occult, and it's very concerning. As an ex-ghost hunter, I understand the problems with the occult and the uh, things that it can cause. You know, it can cause demonic attacks. It can cause a lot of problems. But anyway. I wanted to come on and share some things. There's a wide variety of things that I have found wrong with AI. First, I'll let you uh, know that I am one that have become dependent on AI and the technology with it. First, I want to say uh, that AI is artificial intelligence. Anytime that you go to type on your phone and you make a mistake in the spelling of something, AI will come on and do a spell check for you. Um, if you own a pair of, say, Apple AirPod Pros, which that's what I have, uh, it would be something that you really depend on uh, in everyday technology. I can be at the grocery store and get a phone call. And if I'm, you know, loading groceries into my car or I'm checking out, it'll tell me in my ear, it'll say, you're getting a phone call from so-and-so. Do you want to accept the call? If I say no, it'll say, okay, we're sending the call to voicemail and it'll send it to voicemail. Um, or I can just say yes and answer the call hands-free, you know? So I can also be going down the road, say for instance, and I can say, hey, Siri, um, can you get me the directions to Cocoa High School? And it'll come on there and it'll tell me the address and it'll say, would you like the directions? And I'll say yes. And it'll, next thing you know, it'll take me right to the, the address. So people can become very dependent on it. You see, that's where, you know, the convenience of it is more apt to uh, accept it. See, um, so I see that that's a problem. But anyway, just recently, my dog chewed up my pair of AirPods. And I was, it was a big inconvenience for the, for a day until I got another pair, but, um, it didn't take me long to get them. I found a way to get them. I didn't even really have the money to get them, but I found a way to get them. But, uh, but anyway, it's, it's, it's something that can be a very, a big inconvenience suddenly if you are without it, if you are someone that is grown accustomed to having it. So, you know, I, and I didn't really realize how much until I didn't have it you know, for that day. <laughs> um, but, you know, and, and it, it makes you think about the kids in school nowadays, you know, nowadays they can go on uh, what's that called AI chat box or something like that. And you can ask it to write an, an essay for you. And it will, within a minute, it will hurt. It'll write an essay for you on a certain subject. So, the kids nowadays, you know, they don't have to go through much to get the information. It makes you wonder how the schools are going to adapt to this new technology. I did hear that they come up with a, a plagiarizing um, detection uh, program, which I actually, I heard that they actually had something like that before already, but it's starting to, they're, they're going to try to find out if it's actually an AI generated essay or if it's one that was genuinely wrote by the student. So, you know, it's going to be uh, interesting to see how it's going to come out and, and, you know, with the kids nowadays in school. Because I remember when I was in school and I had to find out information on a certain subject, I would usually go to the local library. And when I would, I would not, you, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't be, you weren't able to just get one book on that particular subject you would have to get like three or four books because only one book only had so much information. And sometimes that book didn't have the information you were looking for with that particular topic. So, you know, think about all the, what we used to have to do to get information. You know, nowadays it's so convenient. It's right there at our fingertips. And I mean, you don't even have to type for it. You could just say it. Um, it's just become so convenient and it's just, it's very, it's crazy is what it is, you know, when you think about it, but with the way that the students and the new generation is going to be looking to AI for information is actually really scary.
because whenever they look up this information, you know, this chat box, I went online and I actually went into it and started having a conversation with it. And I wanted to see exactly, you know, what kind of information it would give when I asked questions. Well, I asked a question and it was, it had to do with Jesus Christ. Okay. First off, I want to say I am a born again believer. I am radically saved. I believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the son of God. Um, and he died and rose again for our sins, remission of our sins, so that we could be saved. Okay. But anyway, so I asked Chatbot if, if Jesus Christ was the only way to heaven. With with answers like that, it's very neutral and it's subjective truth, not objective truth. It's something it's obvious that the information given by this AI was designed to be relative information, you know, especially concerning religion and faith. Um, it was very careful to remain neutral and to not offend anyone. All truth is subjective truth with, with this AI chat box. Um, let's see, but with this AI, um, and, and information, you know, I think the problem is the AI with misinformation, you see, like what I just read to you, um, this is the kind of, uh, answers that children are going to be getting. And, you know, the kids in school, when they want to know things, you know, when they want to look up information, of course, they're going to go to this AI for information. So if they're not a child that is grounded in and going to church and, and grounded in learning the Bible and things, this is where they're going to get their information. That is scary. It's very scary. Now, who is the one that is over misinformation? The enemy. Okay. Um, just as Satan deceives mankind through misinformation, you know, this is how this AI is going to deceive people. Okay. I do believe that the enemy is behind it. 100%. I think that this is how the enemy will use AI is through misinformation. People will be looking for, you know, for it, for information and looking for truth uh, to life's questions instead of the Bible. And this is the information they're going to get. Okay. Um, after, and like I said, after giving this ch chat, it's called chatbot uh, AI. Um, and after I gave it a try, that's exactly what I found to be true. And it's very neutral when it comes to religion. It says everybody has their own rights to their own religion. No one is wrong, blah, blah, blah. Okay. In the Bible, we know that in the end times, we see in the book of Revelation, there will be a one world monetary system, a one world religion, and a one world government ruling the world. And it's easy to see how AI can play a big role in this system. This system is the system of the Antichrist. Christianity will be the one religion that will be forbidden. This one religious system, this one world religious system will reject Jesus as the only way for salvation and to heaven. It is impossible for Christianity to be all inclusive. The reason is the reason it's impossible is because the Bible says that we must have faith in Jesus as our Lord and Savior to be saved. And it also says that Jesus is the only way. It says in John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And then it says in Romans 3, 22 and 24, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all, them that believe 
for there is no difference being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. You see, the things this AI says may not seem important, okay? But remember, wrong interpretation means wrong application. Okay, now that to me is the biggest problem with AI is this misinformation, okay? But going into looking at other ways that AI is being used through the occult and um, as a tool of the occult, AI is, they have programs with AI contacting the dead. They have these uh, things. I'm going to go ahead and share a video real quick. Let's see, where is this at? Let's see here. This is going to blow your mind. Bob, is that you? Mary Berry. Oh, you're calling me the nickname. Oh, my God. Tell me more, Bo. I can't believe it's really you. It's, it's been so long. It has. It's oh. so great to see you, Mary. Great to see you, and you look so well. I miss you and love you so much. I miss you, too, and that's music to my ears to hear you saying that. I haven't heard you say that in so long. It's really you, Bob. It is really you. It's really me. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Wonderful. I can't believe it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, I, I hated leaving you so much. Oh, I know you tried not to. Yeah, I fought as long as I could. Yes, you did. I tried to take care of you the best I could too, but when you're ready to go, you're ready to go. Oh, you did. You were wonderful. You were the best wife, nurse, anybody could ever ask for. Um, it just goes to show you the technology that this AI is being used for. Um, like I said, there's many other programs with it where people are trying to contact the dead. And, you know, a lot of people would argue, well, this is just a machine. This is technology. Uh, there's no way that these spirits can use that. They cannot manipulate that. As an ex-ghost hunter, I can tell you and I can assure you it will and it can. Uh, they can be used. They can manipulate Ouija board plaches. They can, they can manipulate dowsing rods. They can manipulate trigger objects. Say, for instance, a ball or a bell, or a doll, it can move things. Yes, I'm sure that it can come through and manipulate electronics or anything else. They can even talk through a phone or a recording device or just even, uh, you could just hear a disembodied voice, you know, out loud, just as if you were talking to somebody. So, you know, if it can do that, it can. they can come through and manipulate technology. No problem with that. Um, so, um, this AI is being used to contact the dead. It's also being used to, uh, there's what they call AI psychics, um, or psych psychic AI, something like that. But there's many of them. If you go onto your app store, okay, like if you use Apple uh, app store, go into it and look up psychic AI, you're, there's a lot of programs already. You could just go to Google. I did it. I went just because I was, you know, researching it for the video. I looked up psychic AI. And do you know, it popped right up and started asking me questions. Like one of the top ones. It was, I don't know if it was like an ad or what, but it was asking me a question. And I said, is this a psychic AI? And it came back and said, yes, it is. Would you like to uh, a reading or something like that? It was going to be free. Okay. Absolutely not. I don't want a reading, <laughs> you know, but um, this thing is being used for the occult purposes. So that's a problem. You know, that that's a big problem. Also, there is a program. It's called it's called the Apple Vision Pro. OK, 
Now, this is something that uses AI, it's uh, artificial intelligence, and VR together. VR is virtual reality. And what it does is, um, say, for instance, my grandson has a Oculus. It's a, a VR set. What it is, is it's a headset, and they put it on, and suddenly um, they see, the like, say, for instance, the reason my grandson has it is because of the video games he does play. And you can, you're actually like you're in the game. You know, you can sit there and you play it and you are just like you're in the game. So it puts you into it. It's a virtual reality. Um, but this new one is really a lot more advanced. It is uh, whenever you put it on, you turn it on. Uh, just imagine when you look at your phone, okay, you have your, your apps, you know, well, on this VR thing, when you put it on, these apps are going to be right in front of you. Not only do you have to take your hand and act like you're going to touch a button to turn it on, this AR and, and VR is so intelligent that it knows by your eyes. Okay, have you ever heard of, um, what do they call that, where you can look at your phone or you know, it reads your IR in your eyes and stuff. Well, it's kind of like that. And what it does is if you are looking at your apps on the, on the, you know, right in front of you it, through this uh, headset and you look at something and you stop and you look at it a few seconds harder and it look, you look like you're going to want to open that app. What it does, it reads your eyes and it opens it for you without you prompting it to do it with your fingers or your hands. So it reads your IR, it reads your expressions, it knows when you want to open an app and it'll open it for you. Well, the another thing that's very strange about this uh, new technology is when you go to look in your photos, okay, when you go to look into your photos on there, you're not just looking at your photos just like you do on your phone. You look at your photos and your videos, you can actually enter them. Like it's almost as if you are in them. You are living, you can actually, it's almost like reliving the event of when you was taking the photo or when you was taking the video and you can stand there in it 3D. You can actually be in the photo and stuff. Um, you, you, it looks like you are. So just imagine you have videos and, and photos of you and deceased loved ones. Okay. You know where I'm going with this, right? Okay. You can actually pretend that you're in them photos and stuff again and come right up to them and look at them. It's almost just as if you're right there reliving it like you're in the photo so that's that's strange you know um now i you know a lot of people would say well that's just imagination it's not like you're really in the photo with them you're not really you know uh, talking to them you're not contacting them or anything like that but imagination means a lot when you use your imagination and stuff and you are pretending you're doing these things or whatever, that's witchcraft. When you feel like you're really manipulating the environment and things, that's that's witchcraft. Um, you know, there's another thing on here that really made me think about this. And um, I'm sure it's going to make you think too. Okay, I'm going to put this on real quick. Four hours a day. I guess ultimately the real limit is radical life extension, where they figure out how to somehow upload your brain into a cloud or some some other science fiction craziness so that they can really get you forever and just mine you for juice forever. But that's what they want. They want you to be spending more and more of your life there. They want you to have business meetings there. They want you to watch movies there. They want you to hang out with your friends there. They want you to play games there. They want you, oh, you're definitely going to look at a ton of porn there, right? I mean, that porn is ubiquitous in our culture. It drives so much technological advancement. The vast majority of people look at it regularly. I mean, the minute that you pair these goggles with some sex robot that I'm sure they're going to develop tomorrow, then we're never reproducing again. Then civilization is actually over. The human race is probably over at that point. But but even put, put all of that aside, 
it's going to be, for all intents and purposes in public life, you. And so if the public representation of you is having decisions made by a computer. Now, the program that he's talking about is that Apple Vision Pro. And I, you know, being familiar with what those VRs are like and things, I can see where people will be watching porn and things through that. And I mean, when I watched that little clip right there, I got the creeps because it made me realize, you know, these things are going to be taking over a lot of areas in people's lives. And if they think that they can depend on that type of thing, pornography, especially when it becomes very realistic, okay, if they can feel like they can avoid uh, getting STDs, getting involved with someone and have to answer to someone, um, have the type of relationship that other people don't accept, but they want so badly, um, say for instance, same sex relationships, they could do it through that. You see what I mean? It would be easier for them to do that. You know, if they don't want to get related, you know, with someone that might get pregnant, they don't want, like I said, they don't want to have STDs or answer to someone. They might find it much easier to go through with, you know, start depending on pornography, especially when it becomes like that, when it's very realistic. You know, they're talking about like when you go to touch someone, okay, and then you're going to be able to feel a sensation come back to you too. I mean, it's, it's, it gets very technical and it's very, it's out there, man. I mean, it's, it's this crazy stuff, but it's become a reality. And, uh, you know, I can see where this kind of thing will start, can start taking over. And just like that man just said, uh, you know, it could take over where a lot of people won't be reproducing. I mean, they're going to be, you know, dependent on these kind of relationships things like that. There's what they call a mindful app that's on this VR thing, this uh, Apple Vision Pro. And this mindful app, there was a girl that is on the local news here that actually um, tested this, you know, this um, Apple Vision Pro. And she's very into yoga and meditations and stuff like that. And she got on there and she talked about how mind blowing. And that was what she said. This app was because the mindful app, uh, you know how they uh, envision chakras and the colors and, and, and mandalas and, you know, with all the colors and all this stuff. And she was talking about how realistic these things were. Okay. Look at this. This is a, just a uh, sample of what it's, like let's see experiences on vision pro can also expand in three dimensions filling the entirety of your space like in the mindfulness app where you can create a moment of calm but you see how that is and it looks so real and so uh I can just imagine, you know, it would, it would just seem so peaceful and it would really take meditation to a whole nother level and then some. So, and then another thing that I, you know, discovered with this AI is this new AI Jesus. And it's actually in, I think, Fortnite. I believe, um, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. It's in one of the games that a lot of the kids and stuff are playing, but it's called ask Jesus. And what you do is you go on there and you can ask it all kinds of questions, questions to de de just anything like, how do you cook lasagna? Or, you know, who was it that parted the red sea or, you know, any questions that you can ask on Google, you can ask this, ask Jesus. And it's scary because you know what? A lot of kids that don't know any better, they really feel like this, they're getting the truth with this AI Jesus. Here's just a sample of it. I want to, I want to share with you guys. Your name deserves mad respect. 
Bring your kingdom, let your will happen on earth as it does up there. Give us our daily dose of bread and forgive us for slipping up as we also forgive those who slip around us. Keep us from losing our way and protect us from the negative vibes. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. That's something, isn't it? Isn't that so disrespectful how it did that? Um, it, I mean, there's, there's a lot to that. You can just research AI Jesus. You're going to be shocked at the different things it says. And it, you know, different Bible verses, the way it says it and stuff is way off. And people don't need forgiveness for slips or slip ups. That's not sin. That's different, you know. Um, it's just, it just isn't right. It's just, you know, you can just hear that and think, you know, that's not respectful and that's not the way that Jesus said I know would, would talk. Okay. Here's another video. This is also with these AI, uh, artificial intelligent, uh, robots and how they answer questions about like, say for instance, God, here's one. What is your name? Michael. Michael. Can you look at me? Of course. Hello. What color is my jacket? Your cut. Your jacket looks black. Oh, wow. What color is my hair? I cannot tell you exactly, but I would guess brown. Yes. Am, am I wearing a watch? Yes, my cameras detect a watch. Do you believe in God? I don't believe in anything. This next generation is going to lean on AI more than ever. And with that, we got to make sure that they understand the truth and don't lean on robots to give them spiritual nourishment. Now, a lot of kids is going to be looking to this thing for information. That's the big thing about this artificial intelligence. That's a problem. Yes, it's being used to contact the dead. That's big. Yes, it's being used as, you know, to um, as a medium or psychics. It also this AI Jesus. That's huge. You know, a lot of kids are going to be going and asking this thing questions and trying to find out truths about the Bible. Um, these kids that don't know the truth and they think they might think it's funny. I'm sure a lot of them is going to be, you know, taking it lightly. But the problem is you would be surprised when you talk to kids and find out, you know, different ways that they learn their truths and that they actually believe it. You know, because they heard it before. Where are they going to hear it from? This new AI. But this misinformation, AI and misinformation, that's the biggest problem with AI. And uh, it's going to be, you know, and, and who else, you know, would be behind it? Come on, you know, the enemy. And I can see where this, this intelligence, this AI intelligence, I can see where this will play a role in the Antichrist system. Absolutely. I, I just wanted to share these things with you guys. It's very concerning. Um, just, you know, like I said, here I am. Hey, you know, I got my Apple AirPods and then they helped me with everything. My, before my mom passed away, she bought me a refrigerator and the refrigerator, it has a, a TV screen built into it. And I can be sitting in my living room and I could say, hey, Alexa, you know, what's the weather going to be like today? And it'll just tell me. So, you know, we I can see where it's really embedded itself in our lives in all kinds of areas. And it's getting to be more and more. But like I said, the problem's going to be this misinformation. And, and it's 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 going to be it's going to be big, you know, it's going to play a, a major role with the antichrist system coming. Um, and, and that, that's not good, not good at all. So anyway, guys, I, I know it's nowadays, it's almost impossible to, uh, avoid AI altogether because it, it has embedded itself in, in our everyday lives, 
but be leery about it. Talk to your children, let them know the truth, especially when it comes to the Bible and Jesus and, and things like that, you know, and um, tell them to talk to you about the things that this AI is telling them. And, you know, it's like, say for instance, if you go to look up something yourself on Google, okay, you can select from the different sources, which sources is true. But when you look up information from AI, it selects which one is truth and it will tell you the information. Just like when I asked um, AI chatbot, I asked it, is Jesus the only way? Right away it told me, you know, everybody has their own beliefs and we should respect everybody else's beliefs. That was crazy. I can't believe that it did that, you know. Instead of saying, if you're a Christian, yes, that's true. It wouldn't even say that. I mean, it just right away was telling me I should respect other people's beliefs. You know, that's not right. That's that's demonic, isn't it? I mean, the enemy is behind that. It really is. That's just that's weird. <laughs> but anyway, God bless you guys. I've been I've been I have not made videos. I haven't I haven't got any guests to come on or anything. I've been pretty sick. I just had gallbladder surgery and I'm just now today I'm feeling better. So I'm going to be having more videos come up. I've been working on this one. I've been working on getting this information about AI and all the concerns that I have with AI, especially being an ex-ghost hunter. So anyway, God bless you guys. You take care and have a good night. Bye-bye.